We're going to get started. I would first like to introduce to you Elizabeth Glassman, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Terra Foundation for American Art. Um, as those of you who have enjoyed Terra here or in Giverny, um, the organization is dedicated to expanding not only the presentation curation, but also the understanding of American art throughout the world um, with offices here and in France. Um, Elizabeth's roots in the arts, um, many, many experiences, also a private collector. Um, her hometown of Houston, the Manil Collection, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, and the National Gallery of Art in our nation's capital. Elizabeth also established the Georgia O'Keeffe Foundation and served for 10 years as its president. Since moving to Chicago in 2001 to run the two Terra institutions here as well as Giverny in France, she has led the foundation in developing and launching its expanded grants programming, which has awarded more than $95 million in support of exhibitions, scholarly, and public programs here and around the world. She also oversees the foundation's renowned collection of American art, as well as partnership projects, including the first American art exhibitions to take place at the Musée du Louvre in Paris and in the People's Republic of China, which is quite an accomplishment, I think. Um, please welcome um, Liz Glassman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and to have a few minutes to introduce the Art Design Chicago and talk a little bit about the Terra. Um, you know, Chicago is, we, the, the name of the program today is Intersections, and Chicago we feel is an, a unique intersection of art and design, and that's what we are going to, all our colleagues, and we all will see evidence of that uh, this year. I really want to thank the panel, the distinguished panel that has agreed to join us. I know I look forward very much to hearing what they have to say, and I want to thank you, Anne Marie, for supporting this topic, this event, and for moderating the conversation. And my thanks to the City Club. We, all of us at the Terra, very much appreciate your partnership in letting us come and share and hopefully engage you in sharing with us the activities of the year. It's surprising, but the Terra Foundation has actually been around for 40 years, and since that time, we've consistently been champions of American art, both in Chicago and nationally and internationally. It's, we have had different structures, as Anna Marie said. We had the two museums, one in Chicago and one in Giverny, France. And now we operate as the Terra Foundation for American Art. But through all of that, our mission has not changed, which is to expand knowledge, appreciation, and enjoyment of American art in Chicago and around the world. If we had a bumper sticker, it would say that we are bringing American art to the world and the world to American art. And Chicago has always been very much a part of our world. I hope many of you visited and remember the Terra Museum on Michigan Avenue, and I want you to know that's still where we're headquartered today. But if you're looking for our wonderful paintings that we had on display, you can find many of them on, in the galleries of the Art Institute, has been our partner since we closed the museum in having these works in the American Art Galleries. We generally have about 50 Terra paintings up at a time. They say you always know a curator or a museum person because they read the wall labels from the bottom up. <laughs> so if you start reading from the bottom up, you'll know all the ones that are from the Terra. We also lend our paintings quite generously around the world. We try to have about 30% of our collection out at any given time. So we're not just keeping it in the, in the vault. Um, as Anna Marie said, since, in addition to sharing our collection, we're very active grant makers. And, you know, $95 million is a number that we're very excited about because this is a 15 year, basically, enterprise, 18 years of grant giving. 
and we've been able to support more than a thousand exhibitions and scholarly programs here in Chicago and around the world. One of the interesting things is that unlike a public-facing institution such as a museum, a foundation operates behind the scenes. So we support institutions that in, serve, in turn serve the public. And it's only this year that we've sort of stepped out from behind that curtain to present Art Design Chicago, which is a celebration of Chicago's rich art and design legacy and its impact today. The idea, however, from Art Design Chicago came from listening to our community, which consists of curators, educators, historians, and artists. Colleagues came to us, we engaged them, and they told us about the projects they had been wanting to unearth, explore, and share. And it's this rich cultural history that we will all be seeing during this year. There are more than 30 exhibitions, hundreds of tours, talks, special events happening all year round. And we're working with over 75 partner institutions to present this incredibly rich um, offering. They range from the Hyde Park Art Center to the Museum of Contemporary Art, and from the Video Game Art Gallery to the Cultural Center, and many more. The guidebook that we've put on your table, as well as our website, has a tremendous amount of information in it, and I hope you'll all be enticed to come and join us. There's so many of, I keep telling the uh, teachers and everything that I see, this is, so many of these are free, and there's exhibitions, but there's also fiestas and neighborhood events and library events. It's very exciting. Um, there's six exhibitions already up, but we really get underway in the summer and the fall. You'll see quite a number more. As you all know, Chicago is a city that not only works, but works together. And the Chicago, uh, the Terra Foundation in presenting Art Design Chicago has been joined by generous partners. Our presenting partner is the Driehaus Foundation, and our other enthusiastic supporters include Leslie Heinemann Auctioneers, the MacArthur Foundation, the Joyce Foundation, and in-kind support from the Chicago Community Trust, Polk Brothers Foundation, Leo Burnett, and Expo Chicago. The city has always been a place where commerce and creativity are intersected. Art and design does not exist in a vacuum, but it's interwoven with manufacturing, advertising, retail, transportation. And it's these stories and these intersection and forces that shape Chicago's art and design that that's what we're going to all discover this year through exhibition, tours, publications. WTTW will be doing a four-part series, public events, and also the video you're about to see. I want to thank you all for your interest, and I really hope that we'll see you this summer and fall and throughout the year. To understand the largest city in the Midwest, Chicago, is to really realize that the arts is not only a fantastic way to educate the society, but also a great way to change. It's not just about a gallery, it's not just about canvas and, and bronze and selling the artwork and displaying it. It's actually about changing people's lives, changing people's minds, protesting and celebrating. The stories that we're telling here, I think are really quintessential Chicago stories. It's about ordinary people who ended up making extraordinary things. People who would just make art in their homes that filled the public murals in these spaces to actually create community and to find ways of relating to one another. I can't make anything without calling up at least three or four or five or 20 people saying this is what I'm working on, how can we work together, how can what I'm working on support what you're doing, and then vice versa. So it's just Chicago's DIY culture. We make our institutions, we build our institutions from the ground up, and our institutions are made up of a complex network of community support. That's one of the remarkable things about Chicago, how innovative has been out of very urgent situations like the Great Fire. There was a kind of need to rebuild the city, but not just to rebuild it, but to seize the moment try out new things. It became like a laboratory almost, the city 
enable people to come and experiment with art and design. There seems to be a bridge here in this city between art and design, you know, and I, I think you don't need to build a master plan to, to change a city. You can actually bring in magnetic moments and these magnetic moments, these magnetic energy moments transform the city. And that's what we can observe here. It's of course the most important thing. The most important thing in the city are the artists. The artists who work there uh, keep the city alive. The identity of belonging to a city that was created by immigrants because of the industry, the factories that were here, really does change and influence the art and culture. You know, when Sandberg writes Hog Butcher to the World, and when, when I was growing up, you could still smell the stockyards, that says something about the city, because in the city you're always reminded that this is not a city which starts out genteel, it's a city that starts out a little rough. And that gave room, I think, for our Chicago artists to not simply fall in line with the idea of doing an American version of something else, but they could start with their own thing. And so we have artists who start here, they leave and they come home, but they identify as cultural activists who are trying to transform the world for all of us. And I think that's what makes Chicago really unique. That sort of ability to hold on to both a particular identity of our city, but also really embracing a sort of universal humanity. Like the city of Chicago, being a city that is made up of different neighborhoods, different ethnic groups, different parishes. I think that Art Design Chicago will also function in that way. Many different stories coming together to tell one narrative. So looking at the roster of programming that's happening, it's just like this color-coded cultural mapping of the city of honoring and looking back and building on what has been accomplished over the years. And then think about what our contributions are moving forward. I think we can't move forward unless we look back. Thank you for that video, and do take a look at the booklets that are on the table. There's just such a rich, um, wonderful uh, variety of things to see and do associated with this initiative. Um, thank you, Liz, and thank you, everyone, again, for coming. I'd now like to introduce and bring to the stage our esteemed panelists. Um, first, we have Nora Daly. Um, Chair of the City of Chicago's Cultural Advisory Committee and Civic Leader Nan Parai, um, also Vice Chair of the Terra Foundation of American Art. Um, Nora serves on the board and the Executive Committee of After School Matters, the Francis Xavier Ward School, Navy Pier Inc., and Steppenwolf Theatre Company. Um, she's also uh, an advisor on the board of the Illinois Justice Project and the Education Committee for the Museum of Contemporary Art. Nora? <laughs> Thomas Dijah. Um, Thomas is the author of the award-winning History of Chicago, The Third Coast, When Chicago Built the American Dream. Highly recommend it. Um, many wonderful stories in that book. Um, he was born and raised on the Northwest Side, a third generation Chicagoan, graduate of Columbia University. He's been a bookseller. He's been on the agency side of the business. Um, he's always dealt with uh, popular culture, history, um, and um, has many uh, credits uh, to his name in terms of magazine writing. Um, he's the author of three novels, Play for a Kingdom, Meet John Tro, and The Moon in Our Hands. Um, he also did a biography of the civil rights pioneer <clears throat> Walter White, and is co-author of a book on education with the former New York School's Chancellor, Dr. Rudy Crew. Tom, could you please join us? Jacqueline Terrassa is the Women's Board Endowed Chair at the Art Institute of Chicago for Learning and Public Engagement. She is a nationally recognized art educator and a great advocate for the value of the arts and museums in our society and the impact that they have. Also the potential that lies in people, institutions, and works of art and what happens when those three intersect. She was previously the Managing Museum Educator for Gallery and Studio Programs at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. 
and we are glad to have her back in Chicago, her hometown, I think. <laughs> I think we can say that. Um, please welcome Jacqueline to the podium, to the stage. Amanda Williams is a visual artist who is also trained as an architect. Um, and uh, look forward to hearing more about your upcoming experience as a uh, City of Chicago representative at the Venice Biennale. <laughs> You're leaving Sunday. Um, your, her practice blurs <clears throat> the distinction between art and architecture, which we know well here in Chicago, um, through works that employ color as a way to draw attention to the political complexities of race and place and value in cities and the urban environment. Amanda has exhibited widely, including the Venice Architecture Biennale, coming up, a solo exhibition at the Metropol I'm sorry, at the Museum of Contemporary Arts in Chicago, the Art Institute of Chicago, um, and it goes on. Um, she served as a visiting assistant professor of architecture at Cornell University and at Washington University in St. Louis. Please join us, Amanda. All right, let's dive in. <laughs> okay, I have some things I'd like to ask all of you um, in no particular order. And then I have some questions um, that we want to hear from individuals given your perspectives and your expertise. So let's throw out the first one, which is for any and all. What distinguishes Chicago from other centers of art and design? Anybody want to tackle that one? I, since I left and came back, maybe I'll right. go for it. <laughs> I would say that one of the things that has always struck me about Chicago, but especially coming back uh, to Chicago after a few years away, is the way in which um, there's a, a kind of fabric of collaboration in the city. And that is both at the individual level, and you, you heard a little bit of that in the video, but at the institutional level as well. There's a way in which, for instance, the universities and the art schools in the city, um, actually people talk to each other among those schools. The museums and the universities talk to each other and work together. The museums actually talk to each other. We get together. We have groups that are you know, about youth development or whatever it is. And, um, and that kind of sort of multifaceted network is a really important component, I think, of, of the city. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda, what do you think? I think also, um, I think I'm spoiled right now in this moment that we're in, but I think having also lived elsewhere and come back, um, the way in which um, not only institutions that are cultural, but also um, government and municipalities Absolutely. also sort of play a key role um, I was in Detroit a few years ago for Idea City, and they were talking about the idea of uh, having a commissioner of cultural affairs as like a, a foreign concept to, to a way a city should thrive and operate, not just as kind of an accessory, but as a critical component of it. And, uh, I lived in the Bay Area for a number of years, and so the creative community is quite robust, um, but the way in which government then really can come in and, and play a really huge role um, I feel that a lot more here. Um, so I think also this kind of Midwestern sensibility about roll your sleeves up and get it done. Mm -hmm. There's a there's an energy here that, that pervades that Fahim talked about and Cesario talked about, but that I think really makes Chicago pretty unique in that, that enterprise. Right. I, I think geography, you know, as they say, geography is destiny in a certain way. And Chicago's history as being this place in the middle is also kind of one of the reasons why people have gravitated here. That's been its history. It was Las Vegas before there was Las Vegas, you know, it was the convention center of America. And you literally couldn't take a train from one coast to the other. You had to stop and get off. And so I think that the city always had this sense of, of not hospitality, but in a sense, this was a place where people came and they were used to them being together and collaborating and welcoming new ideas and doing something with them. And I think that tradition has continued to, to live on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, we're really lucky in Chicago to have such a great sense of collaboration, not only among our artists and among our institutions, but also great partners in the um, philanthropic community, like the Terra Foundation or the Dree House or the Community Trust or so many other uh, 
so many other um, amazing foundations here in Chicago, but also our corporate community. They really understand that they need to be a part of the fabric of what's happening uh, in our city and really support each other. Um, so I think we're really lucky. I don't think you see that in many other cities, this kind of, um, kind of the full community coming together and really wanting to make change um, for our communities. Let's, let's pick up on this, continue this idea of Chicago as crossroads. <clears throat> you can take that in many, in many contexts and meanings. So creatives of diverse cultures, perspectives, experiences, all converge in this wonderful city that we call home. Um, how does Chicago's um, character or essence contribute to foster, encourage collaboration? I mean, I think this piece that we, we have started talking about of um, the kind of rolling up your sleeves, the, the imagining, I mean, I kind of go back to the idea, for instance, speaking from the perspective of the Art Institute, of like eight years after the fire, this museum was established. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it takes a lot of guts to mm -hmm. do that, you know, to decide to have the vision that this, among many other things that really were also um, arising, but also then the, the challenges that immigrant communities have brought to the city, including many of its artists and its creative makers, and the ways in which, um, in which individuals have had to make their way because there, because you know, there is competition elsewhere in the coast or whatever. There isn't the sort of financial infrastructure all the time that you would like, and so there's a kind of combination of the institutional and the government and the philanthropic and all of that. But also the the you have to make it. You have to kind of make your way if you're going to have a vision and realize it. You have to kind of figure out who the collaborators are, who your network is, and make it happen. So mm -hmm. there's that kind of tension or relationship between the two, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I think um, our 77 community areas are both our gift and our curse. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> everybody's very proud that there's something. I'm, I'm a Ukrainian village. I am Broadsville. I am. Um, so historically, that, that actually allows an inequity to exist that I think um, contemporary artists are starting to bridge a little more of the gaps mm -hmm. between. My studios in Bridgeport, we were not allowed to go to Bridgeport ever growing up. Now mm -hmm. it's everything, right? I um, work with Trisha Van Eck in Edgewater in Uptown, uh, Cesario mm -hmm. in, in Pilsen, right? So there's a way in which a, um, the ability to start reinforcing identity or doing work, and again, Fahim talked about it a lot. You know, he calls, literally, including me, 50 people when he's starting a project, right? So the idea that the artist can sometimes be the forefront of bridging a lot of these gaps mm -hmm. that otherwise couldn't be bridged, um, again, speaks to the idea that we can, um, that the arts can be the impetus and design. Arts and design can be the impetus to um, not necessarily solving all these problems, <coughs> but at least having structures that can help us see ways to address um, kind of that inter, Mm -hmm. show the connectivity that can that can happen and that's what's so exciting about this project is to really give you know young people that historical perspective in order to kind of see the path for moving forward um, there's, I mean there's beyond all the exhibitions and the public programs and the amazing tours I was just on the website today and they have these amazing bus tours I mean it's so comprehensive go on the website and sign up you can sign up on Twitter and Facebook, I did old school email. But any way you want to sign up to get the information is um, perfect. But there's also looking at this, you know, looking at our young people. So the Terra with DePaul University and um, CPS put this comprehensive curriculum together. Uh, the Terra the for, for the first time working um, in the park districts, really looking at our parks as cultural activating, um, place making, art making. Um, as well as some great projects at the Chicago Public Libraries with our teens through U Media, um, and really engaging them in the conversation and looking at the historical. Um, um, so much of what has happened um, in a lot of the exhibitions that is kind of uncovered thanks to the great scholarship um, and curatorial work. Looks at like immigration issues in our city. Looks at our social activism and political um, kind of space in Chicago. So I think it's great for us to then also reach down to our young people and teach them uh, kind of the history, but also for paths to move forward. And I do believe our contemporary artists. We are so lucky in Chicago. We have so many amazing artists. 
Um, uh, so here, here. Um, uh, Tom, you've said um, on more than one occasion that understanding America <laughs> requires understanding Chicago. What do you mean by that? And how does that relate to art and design in our well, city? I think it's sort of, there's two parts of that. One we've kind of been touching on, which is that sense of, of this is a central place, I think. But the other one is, is kind of the opposite, which is that um, Chicago was the city that was supposed to be the new city. You know, New York was kind of the established East Coast thing, and Chicago was where you went to start something fresh. And it wasn't always, um, it was outside of, of the focus of all of the marketplace and the media to some degree. So I think people here, artists and makers, got the chance to experiment. They got the mm -hmm. chance to improvise. They got the chance to take chances and try and fail and not feel like it was mm -hmm. a you know, kind of high wire act. And so that has added to that sense of play and collaboration and creativity that is Chicago, but that also is America, you know, and, it, and so Chicago kind of mediating America to itself. It's the, Chicago is kind of the discussion America has with itself. Um, and New York is kind of the discussion with the old world, you know, and so this is a place where we have new ideas and um, that's crucial, I think. And the other thing I was going to say about that sense of getting out into the city, you know, one of the wonderful people who's kind of coming, I think, into focus in Chicago now is Maholi Naj, mm -hmm. who was the, uh, the man who started the, the Institute of Design. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said was, everyone is talented. And that was just a perfect mesh with the other word, I think, of Jackie that you said, which was makers, and that this is a city of makers, whether it was our grandparents who came over at the turn of the century, who, you know, Germans who made chairs, you know, design and craft, making things with your hands, and um, it's just a part of being in Chicago, and part of being a Chicago is that sense of making, and so I think Maholi's sense of everyone is talented is what this is about. It's about bringing art um, to people, but also realizing that Art is like air, it's like water, mm -hmm. it should be a public utility. And this is kind of part of that effort, is yeah. to make it something that we do every day. Mm -hmm. So Amanda, you're, you're a contemporary artist working in Chicago. Um, so just playing off of what, what I quoted Tom about understanding America requires understanding Chicago. And given your work around race and place and cities and the urban environment, um, what here in Chicago inspires you, motivates you in your work, and how do you tie work in Chicago to the broader reality of where we're living in America today? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> A little softball for you. Um, so as a kind of segue into that, when you were talking, I thought it was really interesting to think about um, my other hat, which is that I was trained as an architect um, and actually taught adjunctly at IIT for a long time. And so all of those, all of those gentlemen, Maholi, Nahi, and, and Mies, and even Albers to some extent, you know, in Bauhaus, kind of infiltrating the entire United States and picking these locations that they were going to kind of disseminate design mm -hmm. as this manifesto for how uh, the world could operate, never really imagining me when they were doing that. But they did it nonetheless. And I'm the beneficiary of this great city where architecture is, uh, I think Stanley Tegman called it our fourth sport, right? So um, it's just a given, but actually it's, the architecture is relatively new because of the fire, right? So on, on the one hand, we seem to be the historic kind of epicenter for great architecture, but on the other hand, it's, it's born um, in this moment after the fire that allows it to really blossom as this really wonderful thing because right. it wasn't following mm -hmm. this route that it probably would have had right. that not happened, right? And so yeah. I think um, for me, the city itself has always been an inspiration and not ne necessarily understanding all of that context, but loving that building and drawing that skyscraper. And, you know, my mother having to see over and over again these, these drawings of these sky <laughs> skyline over and over again. It's like, okay, enough already. Uh, <laughs> But then also, John Baptiste Point du Sable, mm -hmm. Margaret Burroughs, right? Like, uh, you know, when I was five, she told me I was an artist and I thought I was special. And then Fahim's like, she told everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, and then now here we are, right? Like, so across these kind of wide berths of the way that we express <laughs> that kind of deep uh, knowledge and understanding of 
the complexities of race and segregation mm -hmm. and the residue of redlining and all these discriminatory practices um, as a way to then manifest a, a kind of vision forward, I think, is our story over and over again, right? So that wasn't something that was present in my mind when I wanted to study architecture, but that definitely then becomes the undercurrent of, of having to make sense of that. And you know, um, when, when the Terra first approached me about coming to think through this thing, the, the Chicago Biennial didn't exist yet, right? So it's like, who is this group that wants to bring art and design together? I'm so happy. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's when you are both and, whatever that is for you, I'm black and a woman, and which one are you first, and which one are you most allegiant to, right? There's 50 groups that are both and, or more, right? Like lots of people can be both and. And so to then see art and design as that other both and, and to really constantly understand the city in those two terms and make those things work all the time, um, you know, we just have countless inspirations for that, yeah. right? I could name I could name a hundred people past and present that are just kind of walking manifestations of that. But I think those those early voices um, from the city itself to to Margaret Burroughs to mm -hmm. Nora's mom to um, Lois Weisberg, like all of these people before I even knew, you know, what what they were helping foster, they really were um, kind of pivotal to to try to navigate the unique voice that I had and not be afraid to kind of express that. Mm -hmm. um, everyone, do you have cards on your table where you can fill out, um, if you have questions? I think there's a blue card, right? Yeah, um, just a, a reminder, please fill out, if you have any questions, pass them around. Someone will be collecting them as we continue the discussion and we want to hear from you as well. So, all right, let's get back to our talk here. Um, um, Jackie, um, Art Design Chicago and its partners are shedding a lot of light through the programming on artists and stories that have been ignored, mm -hmm. um, underrepresented, right. overlooked, untold. Uh, tell us about the Art Institute of Chicago's uh, involvement in this initiative and what will visitors to the museum experience? Thank you, and I think it's evident from the brochures in your hand uh, just how many of those stories are really coming to light and really appreciate the Terra Foundation and its partners for making it possible uh, for that to happen. At the Art Institute, on the one hand, we've always told stories about artists in Chicago and design in Chicago um, and the kind of city's cultural landscape in a broader context um, of the kind of global art world, but I think one of the things that has been so important um, already about this initiative is the way in which we've been able to go deeper and wider mm -hmm. as a result of it in the sense and, and within the larger context of what else is going on in the city at the same time. This kind of concentrated attention allows us all to have a kind of bigger picture of the stories of the many diverse stories and, and um, types of art and types of making. So at the Art Institute, one of the things, for instance, that we just opened is a wonderful exhibition uh, largely drawn from our collection called Never a Lovely So Real, which is uh, about Chicago photography um, and film from 1950 to 1980. Hmm. And, um, and it's essentially painting the picture that, again, you, you sort of got a resonance of that in the video, Chicago is a city of neighborhoods. But most important in this period of time when we're thinking about Chicago, 1950 to 80, I mean, really a time of incredible social change and physical change in the city. Mm -hmm. um, highways being built, the high rises, you know, um, housing uh, projects, all of these things happening in the city during this time and the incredible kind of contested landscape of all of that, the social landscape in the neighborhoods and how artists, photographers, filmmakers were really not just documenting but really creating a vision of their neighborhoods and of what was happening on the ground. So those stories um, are really powerful and that's one example. In the summer, and that was possible thanks to the fact that we had, um, we had not only implementation funds from Terra, but research and development funds. Mm -hmm. And similarly for the exhibition that we have in the summer of the really important American artist, Charles White, mm -hmm. it's a major retrospective that will travel. Um, that exhibition, we had again had research and development funds that allows us to go deeper mm -hmm. and as a result, be able to do a kind of programming and a kind of storytelling around that show that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And I think the connection between scholarship and public mm -hmm. engagement is one that is quite clo close 
Research is not just for the scholars, research is for all of us. If we don't know the stories, if we don't know the details, if we don't know the nuance, if we don't know, if we don't have the voices of those artists who were on the ground, sharing oral mm -hmm. histories, for instance. Um, we, we can't have an audio tour with the voices of those artists telling those stories to the public today. Um, so those are some of the things that are possible. And then on the other hand, um, one of the things I'm really excited about is in the middle of the summer, July 21st, we're gonna have the first block party at the Art Institute, which is all around the idea of art and design in uh, Chicago and through the lens of our collection, but we've done from an open call, a kind of curated program uh, that includes a lot of different partners and voices and artists from across Chicago. It's really about multiple different ways of engaging with art, and it's really a celebration, but also an examination of these stories that are many times not really known. So Indeed. that's, I'm very excited about all of it. That's very cool. Um, Okay, let's let's th throw one out for everybody again here. Um, and and Tom, you may want to kick this off given your um, expertise, your historical <laughs> expertise. He's our content guy on, on historical matters. Um, so, how does Chicago's political and social history affect the city's art and design industry's legacy? However, you want to talk about it. Well, the social history is definitely that sense of, of immigration, of the great migration, of all these waves, but also that sense of moving forward. So in that kind of social history, that's a big piece of it. The fire and the whole idea of Chicago schools. How many Chicago schools are there? There's a Chicago <laughs> school, of, you know, everything, shoes, sociology, everything is Chicago school. And, and that means something. That, again, means this is the new place in that way, and we're going to have this alternate way of, of doing culture. Politically, that's a big one, you know. Um, um, and how is that played artistically? You know, I think the, the biggest challenge has been getting to this place of really having the, the establishment, the business establishment, and a lot of uh, kind of the foundational parts of the city really finally come together with the cultural parts of it. Um, many are the sad stories of, of Maholi Naj having to go around and like beg people for money. And I've read many sad letters that he wrote kind of, and, and there was just a sense of those things not coming together. And, and what I think has happened and what I see, because I'm another person who left and came back, is, is the city and those other elements, the artistic, but also financial and political, really now understanding how these things work together and, mm -hmm. and starting to tell Chicago's story in a, in a much richer kind of way that is tapping into the kinds of stories that are all over art and design, that aren't kind of the same old. We are revealing so many new things that are just news to me. I mean, I looked through that book and I thought, God, I didn't know who that was, and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And that is a whole new freshness for the city as it learns itself, I think, for a new century. And so I think there's a real future in what's going on here with this program. We're just learning new stories, and I think in a very kind way, um, talking to each other about it, which is exactly what the city needs, I think. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to comment on, on that? Historically, no? You know, we were talking a little bit earlier in the week, and I was thinking, you know, what's a, what's a really practical, every person's example about um, design, you know, art and design in Chicago? And, and, and the issue of um, Sears and Montgomery Ward came up in terms of the catalogs mm -hmm. and, you know, the manufactured houses mm -hmm. that you could order from Sears. Ebony right. Magazine. Well, I yeah. Mean, there's a whole kind of, the, the business nexus yeah. is, is crucial. I mean, in, that, in the sense that, aside from kind of sponsorship, there was the fact that you had the factories, that the Chicago was the world's biggest printing center, which mm -hmm. meant that catalogs were printed here and magazines were created here from popular mechanics to Playboy. Um, but that also meant that photographers could work here. And so you have a very, you know, when you look at the kind of people we consider art photographers, yeah. they were also working photographers. Yeah. So you can go through magazines at the time and find, oh, gee, there's that, you know. And that's a really exciting thing. You had that kind of critical mass of people being able to work as, you know, make a living, mm -hmm. but also work as a creative. And that is been something that Chicago has had its ups and downs on, you know, yeah. and that ability to do. But that that 
business, being able to make a living and be an artist is, is basic. Yeah, and getting back to the first question that we threw out about what distinguishes Chicago from other centers of art and design, I think the commerce component you know, is, is a big one, at least historically over time. Ups and downs, yes. Right, but it's also but, specific to certain, like there were certain periods when being a visual artist or a painter in Chicago was not yeah. really that easy, you know? It's still it's, not right, 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 right. <laughs> Sorry. But there are, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's a little easier yeah. now. Yes. And there yeah, were yes. times when there was no very little institutional support, or very specific, mm -hmm. when you had a couple galleries, mm -hmm. when you had people going to New York or Paris to buy their art. Mm -hmm. You know, for a long time, the, the place where most people bought their art was Marshall Fields. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That was the biggest gallery in Chicago for a long yeah, time. So, um, you know, that, that's changed. Mm -hmm. I think there's a greater <laughs> sophistication now, and it is easier, but it was, it was hard, so. Yeah. Um, just a reminder, I have, I have one question from the audience. <laughs> and Dude, I would encourage you to, oh, goody, goody, one. okay. Someone's coming around, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, Nora, yeah. um, please tell us, um, thank you. Please tell us, uh, you know, from your mm -hmm. perspective, and anyone too, but Nora in particular, given your role, what is the long-term value of this initiative that is Art and Design Chicago um, to the city, to our, to our DNA, to our communities? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it kind of builds on everything that we've been saying. I mean, we've had these opportunities for all these institutions, these amazing exhibitions, to really dive deep in a lot of issues. Um, and whether it's the, you know, the research and, and development, but it's also the public programs and wrapping it around with publications, because I think that's really important, or oral histories, or continuing um, the supporting of our young people and really looking at that K through 12 space and how can we engage them in this conversation. So um, I think it's going to have really um, deep, impactful, and I think this is going to be a year that people are going to really remember. Not only did they learn something about maybe not their own community, but another community in Chicago, um, and also had fun while doing it. Because having fun is a part of it, whether it be a block party <laughs> at the Art Institute. This past Saturday, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go, but there was a really fun um, party in Pilsen. Uh, I know in the early fall there's going to be something on the south side and then later on something on the north side. So it's really getting people to come together and kind of creating spaces for people to engage um, and not only what they saw or what they heard, um, but continuing that in their neighborhoods or exploring another neighborhood. Right. So I think we're really lucky, thanks to the Terra and thanks to all these partners and everyone coming together. I know we keep saying this, but collaboration, we are so lucky in Chicago. Um, our artists collaborate, our community organizers. Um, it is just our schools. We are um, definitely weaving a different fabric among our 77 communities. Um, and our artists really are leading the way. There are community anchors. Um, I'm also involved, uh, obviously, in the theater community. And I really see the difference that these you know, storefront theaters make in a neighborhood. They're an economic engine. They are part of kind of the chamber of these communities, even though a lot of our artists aren't seen that way. So um, as we're moving forward, I think it's going to be a really exciting time uh, for Chicago uh, to not only learn, but to move forward. Yeah, I, I, if I, you know, I think a lot of times people think about art and culture as being something that a city creates to bring in tourism. Mm -hmm. It's about attracting people outside to come do stuff. And, and I think its greatest value is exactly what you're describing, is for us to have those theaters in neighborhoods, to have programs where kids are coming to, that it's about the greatest market for culture in any city is the city, as opposed mm -hmm. to those people who come who are terrific and we love them, but it's about us. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, let's take a couple questions um, from our audience and we'll get back to, to a few other things that we wanted to talk about. Um, all right, let's see. Um, Genevieve from World Business Chicago. What is the role of artisans and artists in Chicago's neighborhood economies? Mm. Anybody want to tackle that one? I mean, I think it's, it's huge, both current and historical. It's, um, it's the way, you know, you mentioned the storefront theater, you know, the, the model as it pertains, for instance, to um, different neighborhoods in the city, whether it's Pilsen and kind of 
artists establishing studios, artists establishing small galleries, artists working with the institutions, or um, you know, if we go back in time, I'm thinking we've been working um, closely with the Southside Community Arts Center because of the Charles White exhibition this summer, because he was integral to the founding of um, and the establishment of the Southside Community Arts Center. And the way in which the Southside Community Arts Center remains a vital in engine for the in the south side of the city and the way for instance the south side community arts center and the hyde park arts center are mm -hmm. also critical sort of these art centers in neighborhoods are fundamental to what happens in the city and to the vitality of the city so i think that's just these are just examples that come to off the top of my head about mm -hmm. the importance of the neighborhoods and artists and artisans working very locally while also not being isolated within the context. Yeah. Um, Anybody else, Amanda? I think also, um, because of this history of segregation, there was a way in which a lot of the neighborhoods out of necessity had to become their everything, right? Totally. So, um, not quite artisan, but when you, we were talking about Spiegel and um, Montgomery Ward and so forth, but you, you said Ebony yeah. briefly, right? But like the idea that a, that a world-renowned publishing engine could come out of the south side, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, so, you know, that, that kind of level of necessity now you see is like pop-ups, right? Everybody mm -hmm. loves a pop-up. So like, we are the, we are the queens of pop-up now. Um, but that's also born out of a kind of temporality about street culture or yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, my husband has a cousin who's a tattoo artist and that's how he makes mm -hmm. a lot of money, right? But that's because there's not another vehicle a lot of times to generate revenue and income through creativity. So I think there's a way in which the, the artisans um, are ubiquitous in that way that we don't recognize, but then there's also a need to make sure that there's equal distribution of things like maker spaces, which everybody thinks are so great and ubiquitous, but sort of cut off themselves <laughs> at certain portions of the city, right? So that access to modern technologies and modern ways of being makers has to continue to trickle in and it can't always be this story of um, you know, blue collar mentality of just made it happen and survived mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. made it through, but it's actually about making sure that we empower. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm running on, but one additional thought, I won't name the fantastic company that might come, but I pointed out that, <laughs> um, you know, Sears made the Sears Tower, right? So you had, you had commerce and industry and corporations that were innovating things that have now left a legacy beyond stores that don't exist anymore. Yeah. I didn't know what Sears was, I knew what the Sears Tower was, right? Mm. So I don't know what blank is, but I better know what they're gonna to bring to the city because that's our, that's our DNA and our foundation, right? So I think there's a way that the, the artisan and the maker has to trickle down, especially with modern technology, you know, mm -hmm. in a more equitable way than, than we've, we've championed the story of kind of the pull yourself up and mm -hmm. just made it happen from nothing. And that's great, but there's, a, there's an opportunity to do more than that through the arts well, and, and the artisans. I like but that those, word. Those, but those coming, I mean, they were put together with unions and guilds and, you and know, guilds, and, 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 and you know, the Southside Community Arts Center is the last WPA yeah. project mm -hmm. yeah. still functioning in America, which is a pretty remarkable mm -hmm. thing. And so it was, you know, and a lot of these movements of any sort were all coming out of networks of people who found each other. So, mm -hmm. I mean, bootstrapping we're was, exactly, yeah. that were organized in a lot of ways and even the individual communities were organized in, in very profound ways. So um, that idea of sort of pulling yourself up, I mean, it's, it, there's a piece of it, but you're pulling yourself up on a, on a lattice, you know, that was there. With somebody right. holding on to it. Right. <laughs> okay, let's take, let's take one more from the audience and we'll uh, get back here. Um, and I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, is it Marquise or Marquis? Where'd he go? He left. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. No, um, all right. Um, let's take another one here. Um, <laughs> Jinja Birkenbuhl, is that right? Close okay. <laughs> well, how, how is it pronounced? Birkenbuhl. Birkenbuhl, okay. From Burke Creative. Um, how is Art Design Chicago supporting artists with training and professional development around digital innovation tools? And then the second part of this is, you know, so that those tools can be employed in raising awareness of um, not only their own work, but, you know, elevating um, Chicago's brand and, and message. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So, our, first of all, is Art Design Chicago supporting artists with training and professional development around digital 
innovation. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not, yeah, you're looking at me. Um, I, am, I am not, I mean, I'm not sure necessarily if it's kind of looking at current technologies. I mean, the project that we're doing with the public library, with U Media, is about printmaking. So it is looking, um, uh, kind of, at, but it's allowing the kids to interpret, they can interpret in their own way. We don't know what they're going to create. It might not be the traditional prints of what I think. Um, they may be coming up with something entirely different. So um, uh, I don't think that necessarily there's a strong, you know, a specific program that I can link to um, with the technology, but I think it's a great space for us to kind of think about. I mean, we're doing, I mean, tech, I'm, you know, we're doing some interesting podcasts and different conversations and oral histories. We have this great one with the um, Chicago um, Athletic Association and some great conversations among Chicago art makers. So check it out on iTunes podcasts. Art yeah. on the Mart. Art on the Mart. Art on the Mart. Art. Oh, right. That's okay. the, well, do, um, do you want to take wanna, Okay. You, you can, that's. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Just stand up and say. Just stand okay. up and okay. Okay. You are empowered. I think that the Department of Cultural Affairs yeah. Oh, yeah. created yeah. this Art on the Mark, which will be a vague digital projection um, starting, I guess, in the fall. In the fall. And the Terra is part of Art Design Chicago. We'll be sponsoring the first one with all of our partners. Doing that. And um, yeah. the artists are presenting their proposals and being chosen now is wonderful to imagine mm -hmm. what it's like to project on the acreage of the um, march. So we'll all be able to go down and see it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Liz. Nope, nope. I just wanted to uh, thank, thank the Terra Foundation for their partnership on the Noble and Art on the March. Oh. Thank you, Sarah. Along with Myron Maurer from the March and the Foundation for Thank you. That's great. That, that's okay. going to be just um, my own. That's going to be oh. a global thing. Like mm -hmm. that is in a, in a sense of like branding Chicago. That's going to be crazy. Yeah. I, I just yeah. think it's remarkable. But good crazy. Good crazy. Yeah. Very good crazy. Right. Okay. All right. Katiana Rabi, 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 um, from the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, also known as CMAP. Thinking of more equitable arts access, what ways can we better connect arts and arts programming to underserved communities and those who are harder to reach? I, I mean, I really, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm very involved with After School Matters. We're in every community. We work with over 15,000 young people uh, in the city, but I also think that we have to look to our kind of what I call the sister agencies of the public libraries, our community anchors, the park district, our every community, um, our community anchors. And I think it's really kind of everyone and working with the community organizations. I know Fahim has done projects on the south side and uh, park district location. He's gonna be out in Austin doing this amazing um, new project uh, as part of the floating museum. So I think it's really just kind of making those connections um, and working with um, you know, all those partners and kind of getting more access and opportunity for our young people. Mm -hmm. And if I can add to that, um, number one, I, I also second the After School Matters um, role in the city is tremendous. Um, and the, it kind of get, gets back to your original question about what makes Chicago sort of unique in a sense and your answer about the role of, for instance, the governmental agencies. Um, the Chicago Public Library, it, the Park District, all of these organizations are ones, for instance, that we're gonna be partnering with this summer, uh, not just to bring kids to the museum, but also to have students who are involved in all of these organizations in different ways create work inspired by mm -hmm. things that are going on in the Art Institute as kind of sources. Um, but also just our ability, for instance, we have, um, 12 interns from through, high, uh, through After School Matters each summer at the museum who are learning not only about kind of the behind the scenes of the museum, but they're also facilitating art making activities mm -hmm. for youth across the city. So those kinds of collaborations that with agencies allowed for a much broader reach than any one institution, whether it's a big institution or a small institution can. So mm -hmm. I completely agree that that strategy is a key strategy. And then in addition to that, just really um, 
drawing attention to the incredible work that small institutions are doing in neighborhoods mm -hmm. and in communities and in what ways our large <laughs> institutions like the Art Institute play a role in collaborating with right. smaller organizations. And as, as much as making has been a tradition, mm -hmm. arts education is very much something Absolutely. that is a specialty of Chicago culturally. You know, someone like Maholi yeah. mm -hmm. in the Institute of Design did not necessarily produce the right. same number of great artists as Black Mountain or some other places, but what they produced were amazing right. arts educators who have had an amazing, 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 great influence going mm -hmm. off, spurring off to other schools and affecting those people. So um, that's a great tradition. It also goes into places like Chicago's job was also to explain America in the world. Encyclopedia Britannica, <laughs> World Book, you know, there's a whole great world of, of middle brow arts education. That is the reason that I'm here, and I know some other people are here from my Childcraft Annual of 1968, which was full of wonderful pictures out of mostly the Art Institute. I mean, it would, Catherine yeah. Koo helped make yeah. contemporary art yeah. accessible mm -hmm. and understandable yeah. to people and not feel as if they were being attacked by it, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's... Yeah, mine was in Spanish, but I also, my <laughs> first view to many of the artworks that are now at the museum where I work was at a, in a childhood encyclopedia, a world craft encyclopedia in right. Spanish in Puerto Rico. I would have never seen all of those things. Mm -hmm. Which was yeah. from Chicago, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. But I, also, so. <laughs> I also want to just chime in and say that I think um, this exhaustive um, feat that the Terra has put on is also like a tipping point that we're seeing yeah. right now. So you have so many entities across so many uh, disciplines that are all pressing forward to make sure that um, at least the effort of the conversation goes on about how there can be uh, these, these, um, these fissures, or not fissures, but like kind of tentacles that go out mm -hmm. into all of these places. Mm -hmm. But I can't emphasize enough that that there really needs to be the effort to kind of pull or convince from the other side groups that have historically been denied and lied to and not mm -hmm. told the truth about how these things work. I'm thinking specifically it's not um, art and design related, but the year of public art last year that mm -hmm. was mounted by the mayor and the Department of Cultural Affairs. Mm -hmm. And when I told my art friends, they were like, oh, they're not going to do that. There's not going to be art in every ward. It just doesn't work like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the press mm -hmm. to fight to even get the artists who are actively making, never mind the community members or mm -hmm. the cousin who's the tattoo artist who doesn't believe that he mm -hmm. can get money to make the work, right? I think at every level we, we have to go that one step further to also continue to push to not only sort of when we think it's convenient or it's fun to mm -hmm. kind of reach out, right? Mm -hmm. But to really go into these groups that are forming these synergies. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic in that so many of the people in so many of these branches constantly are at all of these conversations that mm -hmm. I think it hopefully just fuels that next generation. I'm thinking of um, the my, my block, my, my hood, my city young man who takes kids from one neighborhood, yeah. just shows mm -hmm. them another neighborhood in yeah. Chicago, right? Like, that's, the, that's just the DNA for an mm -hmm. art project that does that, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you can see the ways in which everybody's being invited to yeah. the table that eventually, um, if we all keep our hands on the pulse of making sure that it remains in that way, I think we're just really at a strong moment um, Art Expo, the, uh, the Biennial, like it just goes on and on, mm -hmm. right? Like I think yeah. After School Matters, One Summer, like it, it just doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. If we really can use these infrastructures um, to truly be equitable, I think that we're, we're close, mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Um, I am reminded that it is, our time is, is coming to a close because we have the prize over here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one rapid round for each of you. Um, what would you say to any Chicagoan about Art Design Chicago and why it's a must go, must do now? I would use the tagline that they're using, just go see it. There's so much in every neighborhood. Um, and just explore something and learn something new. I would say this is not about art history. It is art history. This is an event that's happening now that in five or 10 years or 20 years, people are gonna remember this. I would say it's a really fun and exciting way to learn about the social fabric and the economic fabric and the creative fabric of the city. All right. Um, I'd like to. <laughs> no, I didn't to Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out. No, I was gonna say ditto. Yeah. <laughs> We're done. Okay, so um, I want to thank our fine panelists, Amanda Williams, Jackie Terrassa, Tom Dyja, and Nora Bailey.